very good morning to you. Karubu back to Y254 TV in case you're just getting to join us. This is Y in the morning. Hashtag WCW and strength of a woman. And this week's strength of a woman is something that ooh, I'm super excited about. This is not a new face, actually. Sharon, are those people you interview and you feel, mm, am I supposed to? Una feel kama John, the Baptist, mwenyana semanga, whoever uh, is coming, I'm not even supposed to tie their shoelace. This is that case. But the woman in question today is a very strong woman, a super woman who's gone through quite a lot and has emerged victorious. So without further ado, because she's not new, she's, I, I feel vizuri kweka kwa suspense, but drum rolls. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was wondering what kind of an introduction do I give him? Very, very. I, that one is I'm a even... superb one. <laughs> 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 so, in case guys you didn't know, she's Faith Mutoli. Faith has been the face of strength of a woman for a long time. And it feels so good to have you back. Thank you. Karibu. So, do the honors. So, um, <laughs> Faith Mutoli, as you mentioned. Um, born and raised in Kakamega County. I'm a fourth born in a family of seven. Uh, I didn't have the luxury to have, okay, I'm a mother, row of four mm -hmm. triplets, and first born is a girl, mm -hmm. four years, turning four years soon. Um, I'm a wife to a lovely husband. Uh, I didn't have the luxury to have parents. I was orphaned at a very, very tender age. And um, my sister took over as the head of the family. And I must say that she actually made sure, actually she got married with the five mm -hmm. of us. When she was getting married, uh, our mother died when she was in fourth year. So, Coincidentally, my dad passed on the same same year and my, 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 my mother passed. So she took over as the mother. So she got married with the five of us and raised us. Mm -hmm. She made sure all of us at least went up to university level. Wow. Wow. She's a very, very selfless woman. She's a woman with a very, very big heart. Like she... She, she, she took loans to buy us food, to take us to school, to cater for our hospital bills and everything, and not to slay. She chose not to slay. She chose not to buy the best shoes in the market. She chose like us above everything. And I'm so, so grateful. And I'm always, and I'll always appreciate her for the rest of my life. On behalf of my sisters who can't be maybe on air and appreciate her, I'm so so grateful mm -hmm. for her. And so, uh, I forgot to mention, but I can now, I'm a cancer survivor. But now, let me take you back to my life when growing up. Please, thank yeah. you. Oof, so, you, it's quite, I'm <laughs> excited. I'm so excited. So, uh, I was a very, very young, energetic lady, or rather, girl that time that I even used to play football back in school on the same leg that later on turned out to be cancerous. So uh, I remember one day just after completing form four, I was sitting outside in the house with my sister. And then I mentioned to her, uh, she's called Caro. So I was like, Caro, I feel like I should buy a car very early in life. And then she was like, why? And then I told her, I think I'll, I'll get old so fast. And then she says, she laughs. And then she's like, okay, go on. Then I tell her, I feel like when I walk for a very long time, even a shorter distance, I have this kind of burning sensation in my legs. Mm -hmm. So as uh, that time it was just a joke that now turned out later to be something serious. So at that time, when I walked for long distance, I would have that burning sensation. So I insert my legs in cold water and I feel that much relief. So I did it for like two years. 
Now the third year, I feel like you no, know, I should seek medication. So I start moving from one hospital to another. Uh, that time I was in campus. So I start moving in Kakamega. There is no clinic or hospital. They, they didn't know me. So I moved from one hospital to another. Actually, there are so many, so many misdiagnoses. Like I was on arthritis drugs. I was on malaria drugs for so long. And now I finish uh, campus. Now I go to, I now decide to, okay, before I finish campus, I realize like, I can now not work before now in third year. So mm -hmm. I have to always be taking a border to school. Mm -hmm. But now remember, my sister is taking care of us single-handedly, mm -hmm. of course with the husband, of which I give him, again, so much credit because it's so, uh, yeah. it's out of this world mm -hmm. that you find a man who mm -hmm. take you in mm -hmm. with your five siblings. True, true. Right. So. Again, I give him so much credit. So uh, I get, like, I have to go to school. I don't have fare. I can't tell my sister because she's catering for my school fees. Because I was a very hardworking uh, student in school. Mm. But now, when I sat for my KC, KCSE, I realized I got a B minus and I was like, oh my gosh. So my sister has to again pay for private student but how i was even willing to go back to school and mm -hmm. redo my exam mm -hmm. but she was like i will reward your hard work i'll pay your your, your school fees as a private student so mm -hmm. i go to school as a private student now i don't want to bother her again with fair yeah. so i start selling earrings in school mm -hmm. so that i can get fair to school oh wow yeah so I complete fourth, uh, fourth year, now I move to Nairobi. Now moving to Nairobi again, I can't even go anywhere for even an internship. Reason being, okay, I have fare from where I stay to town. But now I cannot walk to ta mm, from to town to wherever yeah. I'm supposed to go yeah. and I don't have the money to that place. Oh, yeah. So I start staying in the house. But later on, uh, I get one, two people come in, help me. And now I did what I could. So. At that time, I was again in so, so much pain. Mm. Remember, I don't know what is eating me. Mm. There are so much dis 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 diagnosis, misdiagnosis that mm. I didn't even know what was eating me. So again, in Nairobi, I start moving from one hospital to another. Mm. Now, uh, I moved to Rangai. Uh, I was hustling there. So one day, I feel like um, I was working with my sister. So I feel like a very sharp pain in my pelvic bone. And uh, before I realize it, I feel like I can't walk anymore. So I call my sister and tell her, I'm stuck, I can't walk. So she tells me, pick a border, go to the house. So I pick a border, I go to the house. Again, after like resting for a few minutes, I realize again, I still can't walk. So the following morning, I so walk. So now you, you have moved to Rongai? Yes. Okay, after school? Yes. Okay. So uh, the following morning I go to a clinic. Uh, I go to see an orthopedic. Mm. So I walk into an orthopedic clinic and the author tells me, Faith, you need to do an x-ray. So I go do an x-ray. Mm. I come back. He tells me, Faith, you need to act with immense speed. So I ask her, what's the problem? He tells me, we need to do a CT scan. So I go Ooh. to Nairobi West Hospital. I do a CT scan, I come back, he tells me we need to do an MRI. Mm. So I do an MRI, I come and he tells me, as I told you, you need to act with immense speed. Go see a doctor. So I go to Nairobi West again, I book an appointment, I see a doctor. Mm. Actually, the, the, author tell, the, author, the orthopedic tell, told me, mm -hmm. I have a tumor on the pelvic bone. So I'm like, okay, so what next? He tells me, for now we are not sure if it's a benign tumor or a malignant tumor. So you have to go see the doctor, mm -hmm. then you see what to do. So I go to Nairobi West Hospital, I get admitted, because now they had now to exercise. You, you're, you've just come to the hospital. Yes. You were okay, like yes. you were feeling just pain. Yes. And then you freak a hospital, they tell you, Go for x-ray, go for MRI, go yes. for CT scan. Yes. And now they're telling you they're admitting you. Yes. 
Now I get oh, ad wow. admitted. Things are moving too fast. Yes. Uh -huh. I guess because I had taken so long. Remember, mm. I started feeling pains like when some I, years back. Some years yeah. back, exactly. So that is why it mm. was now acting that mm. rapid. Mm. So I walk in, they admit me. Not admitting, actually, they tell me I book a walk in surgery. So I book a walk in surgery. I go the following day, but just before I'm admitted, I get that phone call that Faith, Carol has just gotten into a road accident and she has lost her right hand. Ah, yes. <laughs> we have not gone through this. <laughs> so, no, Makio, you, you are here, you've gone for. Oh, see, your sister, you told your sister you're not feeling well. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And then now you've come to Hosi now yes. to get checked. And yes. now you're here getting checked and your sister is here having an accident. Yes. <gasps> so my sister gets into a road accident and I'm told, now Faith, you can't afford Nairobi West Hospital. So you have to go. Makio, I'm admitted now for that walk-in surgery. Yes. I'm already lying on the bed for this surgery, and I'm told, my brother's walking and tell me, Faith, you have to be discharged. So I get discharged, I have to go look for a cheaper hospital. So I go to KNH, what? the following okay. day, uh -huh. I pay around 40,000 KNH, they book me again for a walk-in surgery. So I walk in very, very early in the morning, 6 a.m. I walk in, walking in, I stay, they tell me you are patient number four, five, six, six round there. So I stay at KNH for like eight, nine hours. 6 p.m. in the evening, mm. they come tell me, Faith, we are sorry. Another time, no more. Yes. Huh? Okay. So they tell me, Faith, we are sorry. Mm -hmm. We are not, the surgery is not happening today. So you have to go back After home. After waiting the whole day. Yes. So you have to go back home and come back tomorrow. So I come back tomorrow. Again, I don't have now anyone that I can talk to around there. The, the, the doctor who was, whom I was seeing is not now there. Now I have to start the process all over again. I start the process. I realize I'm not going anywhere. So. And you already paid 40K. Yes. So. What do I do? I go to the accounts office. I tell them, just refund me my money. Mm. Now, because I I'm not seeing any way through. Refund me my money, I go back home. Until today, my money is still rotting <laughs> at KNH. <laughs> yes. So, mm -hmm. I leave my money there. I go home. Now, I decide to go back to Kakamega. Because... I had again exhausted all hospitals mm. in Nairobi. Like there is no orthopedic clinic that I hadn't walked in. So I go back home. Now going back home, uh, now my, my brother had gotten into a road accident. Again. My, my sister, I mean, mm -hmm. and she was the one paying the bills. Yeah. Now she's not being informed how everything is happening. So my stepbrother now steps in. And at Nairobi Hospital, we had been told the surgery will cost 72000 But now remember, I've already spent 40000 40, at KNH. Now I have thirty two. So I go to Kakamega. Now, when I had just started uh, being sick, very sick, that is when my sister got into a road accident. But now, everything was prolonged to an extent that she even got, she was admitted at the, at the hospital for around two months. But now me going back to Kakamega, I found her now already discharged. So she told me, Faith, there is an orthopedic that I see in town. And she's a very good, he's a very good author. So I think I can take you there because at least now she had recovered uh, a little bit. So she takes me to that orthopedic clinic and I met a... Uh, is an a renowned doctor, Dr. Alshula is the late Dr. Alshula. So I walk into his clinic and he tells me, Faith, I have to put you on some medication. And then I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing any medicine. Mm. 
Mm. And then he goes, okay, so you know what you want. Mm. Uh, no, doc. The doctors in Nairobi recommended that I do a surgery. And then he was like, okay, so you think you know a lot. <laughs> Get out of my clinic. So he chases me away. Wow. Then I go back home again with my sister. Then on the way, because why, why did I not choose to take medicine? Mm -hmm. Remember, I've taken medicine for a very, very long time. And if I start again eating into the money that has now mm -hmm. remained for the surgery, I might not now have the money when oh, the time for the surgery now oh, comes. Yeah. Now I tell him, I'm not doing any medicine. He chases me out of the clinic, so I go home. On the way, my sister is like, oh, babe. And I'm like, no. Karumi, I know, I know what I want. Let's just go home. So I go home. But now a week later, I realize now I'm getting weak and weak and weak and weak. So my sister tells me, Faith, you have to go back to the clinic. Apologize to Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Just go and apologize. Because of the pain I was going through, I say, it's okay. I swallow humble pie. So I go. So getting there, immediately I get into the door. The doctor is like, oh, so Faith, you're here. Go to the bank, pay the money, and then we admit you for the surgery. Even before I oh. apologized. See how God works. Yes. So I walk in, I go pay the money, and I get admit, admitted. The follow, that evening, the surgery is done. So the, the tumor is now excised. It's taken to the lab. The histology comes back. And they tell me, Faith, you don't have cancer. And then the doctor tells me, Faith, go home, you are healed. Hmm, just like Jesus. Then I, I say, okay. No. okay, which type of tumor was it? He's not going into details. He tells me, then I realize we are going back where we were before. Like we, yeah, are, we almost again, <laughs> yes, going back into another disagreement. Mm. So I tell him, it's okay, doc. So I pick mm. my bags with my aunt, we go back home. Now, I reach home, I tell my sister, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have cancer. And we were so happy. We celebrated. We thank God for that. But the happiness was short-lived. Allah, plot <laughs> twist. <laughs> Eight months later, uh -huh. again, extreme, extreme pain. Like I can't even wash utensils. I can't even mop the house. I can't even do anything now. Now I've just gotten married, 2017. I'm pregnant now in 2018. I can't even walk around the pregnancy because there is something again inside me eating me. So the, the pregnancy was so, so, so difficult, complicated, extra. But lucky enough, I deliver, of course, through CS, because mm. the pelvic was extremely, extremely weak. Now, after delivering my first child, Maku, I couldn't even carry the, my baby normally, just like other mothers do, when he was around one year, when she was around one year, because now she's heavy, mm. eight months there. And then people would be like, okay. Little do they know, yeah. like, my leg can't just support me. Yeah. So, I go into so much pain one evening, and then we decide, my husband, then before that, I was like, okay, I'm not going to hospital anymore, mm -hmm. because I've done so much. I've, I've gone to hospital so much. I've seen so many doctors, so I'm not going to hospital anymore. So I decide, let me eat healthy and exercise. So my husband was always there for me during this period. Like, I would go through so much pain. He wakes up like from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. and he's there massaging my back. Because I would wake up with a swollen breast today. Tomorrow, 
a swollen leg, the following day a swollen face, a swollen chest, like a swollen every part of the body. Oh, wow. Yes. Ooh. And he would massage me. At times I wouldn't feel like I'm bothering him. So I would just like cry ile pole pole so that as he's care I'm okay. And then I don't know he could just hear me <laughs> crying ivo pole pole and then he would be like faith why didn't you wake me up? So he wakes up again. Massages me until 5:00 a.m. wakes up goes to work. God bless that man. He's an angel to me. That is what I say because He took like care of everything. Remember, now I'm in Nairobi, I'm moving from one hospital to another. Mm. He's the one paying the bills because he told me, Faith, yo, when you must go angu. So I'll do everything for you. So this time round, my sister is not even aware. That took home gone. Yes. And we are not even telling Tell him, him her yeah. that we are paying this much. So uh in such a time when the pain was so much, so my sister, my husband tells me, Faith, no, you have to go to hospital. Mm. So a friend of us refers us to Dr. Wabomba at KNH, though he had a private clinic. Mm. So we go to his private clinic after several visits. He tells us, Faith, you need to do another surgery. So another one. Yes. So again, mm. I get admitted at Mpisha Hospital. And before I get admitted, I was so much concerned about the bill. Mm. So I'm like, Doc, how much could it be? And he tells me, ah, Faith, don't worry. You know, and he used to tell me, you know, you're like family. So he tells me it will be around 70,000. 70,000. So I get admitted. On the day I'm admitted, remember again, I'm admitted for the surgery, but it's just a walk-in mm -hmm. surgery. So I get admitted for the surgery. I walk into the hospital. Again, I have to ask, how much could it be? And then they tell me 140,000. Gosh. And I'm From like... 70 yes. to 140. So yeah. what I realized was, Dr. Wabomba realized that I was in so much pain, but again, I was so much worried, worried about, about money. money. So he told me, Faith, actually, again, he's heaven sent. So when I called, I was like, Dr. Obomba, imagine it's 140 and he was like, Faith, don't worry. You pay the hospital bill and then me, you pay me in installments. So you have 140 for the hospital and 70 for the doctor. For the doctor. And, hey. yes. So I tell my husband, before we get admitted, I tell him, we just have to go back home because we don't have this kind of money. But now again, now I call my sisters, I tell them, this is it. So you have to chip in now, they chip in. I get admitted, I do the surgery. I, di I couldn't sleep at the facility because I didn't have the money. Yeah. So I go home, I remember that night, I cried the whole night. Like I was in extreme, extreme, extreme pain. And I was trying to reach Dr. Obomba and his phone was off until 6 a.m. So I reach him and he tells me, okay, go buy this painkiller. So I go buy the painkiller, at least now I'm relieved. And as I was seeing the doctor, he told me, Faith, we'll take the samples to at least three labs so that we're actually sure of what is eating you. Mm -hmm. So we take to Nairobi Hospital, we take to Mpisha, and we take to Lancet. Mm -hmm. Now he tells me, will go with the majority. So if two comes that you have cancer, and then it's okay. If two says you have cancer, and then we go with it. If two says you don't have, then we go with it. Mm. So the results come, and Mpisha and Nairobi Hospital are not so sure of what is eating me. They are, they, they are like, it's cancer, but we don't know which type of cancer it is. Lancet is very sure that I have a osteosarcoma, a bone cancer. So, the doctor tells me, Faith, again, we are not going with the majority. We are going with what? Lancet has said. Lancet has said, because you have all the symptoms. Ha! <sighs> I'm hard hit. 
Mm. So I start telling God, okay, God, why did you bring me on this earth and give me a child? Now this child is going to be as motherless as me. Like my child will be raised without a mother. By the way, it's not easy mm. to grow up without a mother. Growing up without a mother showed me self-defense, showed me how to fight for myself, made me a responsible, resourceful person. But in one way, it was tough, very, very tough. Like you don't have someone to defend you. You have to fight for yourself. Like you hit me, I hit you. I can't go back home and crying. Yeah. Whom, whom am I going to tell? To tell yeah. And of course, whoever you find home, of course, it's not your mother, neither is it my sister. So they'll be like, when don't buy. So I grew up and I have grown up to be a very, very, very strong mm -hmm. woman, courtesy of being an orphan. So I'm like, God, how? Why? Why should my child again be motherless like mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. So I go onto my knees and tell God, it's not happening anymore. Like, my children will not be raised without a mother because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I was telling God, even before I got married, like, God, if I have to get married and get children and my children be motherless like me, they never give me kids. Mm -hmm. So that time I go on my knees and tell God, God, I told you not to give me kids, but you did. And so you knew you'd give me life. So give me life to take care of my kids. Now again, let me now take you back to hospital. Now I go to hospital, meet the Dr. Wabomba, because now we had to determine the type of uh, treatment. So the doctor tells me, Faith, chemotherapy doesn't work for bone cancer. Neither does radio work 100%. So I have to send you to several doctors so that we don't mess. You are, no, you are just, you, so that you're sure of mm -hmm. what you want and again radiotherapy will make you barren you might not just get kids after treatment hey <laughs> now <laughs> you have you have you have come from a point of you didn't you had cancer you didn't have cancer yes you have come to this point where eight months your short lived your test your your joy is short lived and yes. now you're sick and now they're not even sure which cancer and now they add the barrenness on top of it yes so i tell i th now he start he start referring me to several doctors mm -hmm. and i start moving again i remember walking into aga khan and the doctor was like faith uh the best solution we have is to amputate your leg. And then I was like, no, I'm not losing my leg. So uh, I start again. I, I go to another doctor. So he refers me to Dr. Makori of KNH. So I go to Dr. Makori and Dr. Makori was like, Faith, you let's choose radiotherapy. Because as much as radiotherapy is... Not 100%, but at least it works as compared to, to chemo. And as much as it might leave you barren, at least you have one child. And I remember when I was sick, I, I, I became so spiritual because I visited so many people and so many people visited me. And they would tell me, Faith, when you pray, this is how to mm. pray. Pray like this. And I remember one night I was sleeping and I dreamt of my late mother. And she came to me in, my, in a dream and it was raining heavy. And then she told me, Faith, let's pray. And when you pray, pray like this. It, mark you, it just changed my life completely. So I was praying and seeking medication. Praying and seeking medication. So I, uh, we choose radiotherapy. So I start going to Mpisha for 33 sessions. And before I started the 33 sessions, I get into, onto the treatment bed and the doctor was like, Faith, have you been told that you will not give birth anymore? And then I'm like, yes. And then he goes, I don't want you to start running up and down with papers, taking us to court that you, you are not aware of what would happen thereafter. And then I was like, Doc, I'm aware. You just go ahead. So I start the treatment. And after 33 sessions, I realize, ah, uh, the pain was now going away. One night I remember my husband was like, so Faith, you're sleeping. 
and I'm like, yes, because I couldn't sleep through the night. And I usually say that these small things in life, don't take them for granted. Because there's someone out there who sleeps on a very full stomach, okay, he has the food, but he can't sleep through the night. So I say, like, if you can't even get that food, thank God that you can sleep through the night. Be grateful for the small things that happen in life. So I get the treatment, I finish the treatment. Of course, they were dire, dire uh, uh, side, uh, effects. side effects. Mm. Diarrhea, mm. Uh, uh, puking. Like I could sit around the, the facility for like one, one hour after treatment so that I could just now use the washrooms at my leisure. And afterwards now I could go home. And after 33 sessions, I realized I have no pains anymore. But now the doctor had told me, Faith, your, your periods will fluctuate completely and at times you will not even see them. And during that time, I had come to terms that I will never give birth again. So last year in April, I realized I have missed a period. Hey! To me, I wasn't shocked. Because missing a period, was, was not, it was normal yeah. to me. But now, why does it catch my attention? It comes with nausea and some tiredness and not just being yourself like when I was, when I m missed a period, like I was just a normal. Mm. And I, 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 one evening I tell my husband that I have to, if April 1st comes, when I, had, I haven't seen my periods then, I'll have to do a pregnancy test. So April 1st comes and I go buy a pregnancy test. I come test and the test is so rapid. And I tell my husband, I'm, a, I'm carrying twins. And he laughs off and he's like, you don't even know if the test is positive or it's just, it's false, it's faulty. Maybe the test kit is faulty because he was also, he had also come to terms that I will not give birth again. Mm. But now I'm like, because I'm not so sure if it's a positive test or it's a faulty, or it's a faulty uh, mm. test kit. So I wait and see if I see my tummy growing. So two to three months, I realize the tummy is growing and I <laughs> do, <laughs> I do a fast clinic and when I just got onto the bed for the scan and the doctor tells me, Faith, do you like surprises? And I'm like, yes. And okay, can we count with you? And I'm like, okay, what are we counting? And now you know how we do it there in here, like in three, two, and one. So he's like, let's go one, two, and three. And then I'm like, go. And then he tells me that those are the number of babies you're carrying. Wow. Yes. I, I'm being told time is not on our side. Mm -hmm. I really, yeah, I have so many things to ask, but allow me to ask, mm -hmm. how has everything you've gone through shaped you as a woman? It has made me a strong woman. It has made me know how to fight for myself. It has made me become a very resourceful and responsible person. And I've learned to live life like I live yeah. the time I'm in. Like I don't worry about tomorrow. Like I take a day at a time because I know I'm not promised of tomorrow. Wow. I'm never worried like what if cancer comes back? Mm -hmm. Because if I start worrying, I'll start sl having sleepless nights. Mm. And if cancer now comes, it's even worse. So I've learned to live the time I'm in. Hey, I'm shook. What are your final remarks? I am just shook. I don't <laughs> even know what to say. I'm just shook. My final remarks, I have a YouTube channel. Uh -huh. I'm doing content with the triplets. For the people who are watching me this I'll morning. I'll be watching. <laughs> For but the people who are watching me this morning, uh -huh. I do content with the triplets and my girl. 
go there, subscribe, like, share, and I'm also doing motivational speaking right now. Like, am I not motivating? What? <laughs> you have made guys. <laughs> so if you feel like I've motivated you, give me a call on my number so that I can come give hope to that someone mm. who is not just seeing like there is light at the end of the tunnel. Give us a parting shot on that camera. Parting shot? Learn to live life the time you're in. Never worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. Thank you. Kai, Faye, Mimi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. What? I'm shocked. I don't know. I can't talk. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm just, that was Faith Musoli. I don't know what to call her. I don't know if I should say she's a motivational speaker. She, what stands out for me, she is a very strong woman. Today's um, parting shot on strength of a woman is tenacity, perseverance, and living a day at a time. That is a strength of a woman. <laughs>